This image taken in 2019 depicts one of the first women to receive a certificate for completing a series of studies meant only for those who hold Geshema degrees. This higher education is required to become a fully qualified master, allowing them to have advanced leadership roles. This picture is important as it shows nuns moving up in the hierarchy with a shift of Tibetan Buddhism supporting gender equality, as they previously hadn't been able to obtain one due to the sixth rule of respect. With Tibetan Buddhism having been around since the sixth century, it's not hard to wonder what has taken so long for this change to have finally occurred. Surprisingly, the allowance of women to be fully ordained was due to the rise in power of the West progressive ideology that imposed on traditional Tibetan beliefs and was opposed by Tibetan men and women alike. Men within the practice were against women being able to achieve these higher rankings and thought they should stay as novice nuns. At an international Buddhist conference focused on the topic of full ordination of nuns, Michelle Hanna had a questionnaire for Tibetan monks. Many stated that nuns would be unable to keep the Galangma vows due to them being too rigorous and difficult. More surprising is the fact that Tibetan nuns also seem to be against the change in the sense of how loopholes were used in order to fully ordain nuns, which they had felt was unauthentic. Rinchen, an Indian Himalayan nun, stated, Tibetan nuns do not want to take Galangma ordination with the Tibetan monks and the Dharmagupta nuns. I mean, we don't know about Dharmagupta lineage at all. It's like an alien thing. This shows that Tibetan nuns are more focused about being fully ordained following the rules rather than pushing for this gender equality. If monks and nuns of Tibet weren't as passionate about the push for rights, then what was the driving force behind this change? The answer lies in the West. The spread of Buddhism has given Western practitioners a ton of power. Western nuns were the one to push for equality changes as they wanted to bring their modern gender expectations to Tibetan Buddhism. Tibetan nuns disagree with this, believing that Westerners were seeking power and status. A Tibetan nun named Lobsang had stated, Ordination is not about this issue of discrimination or feminism. The real purpose of taking Big Sunni ordination is about benefiting sentient beings, not about discrimination. Despite this backlash, they had been silenced in order to allow this progressive movement to happen. In June Campbell's 2010 book, Traveler in Space, Gender, Identity, and Tibetan Buddhism, she discusses how the popularity of Tibetan Buddhism in the West might affect gender inequality in the future. In her conclusion, she says, Now that its institutions have been firmly established in the West, the question remains, is it possible to adapt or change them, as proposed by some feminists and Western lamas, in order to accommodate what appears to be fundamental issues? She correctly predicted that the West's prominence would be the driving force that produced this change of nuns' rights. Overall, the change in allowing nuns to become fully ordained was met with tons of backlash from Tibetan men and women alike. Many Tibetan men thought that nuns weren't ready for the hardships that come with this while also wanting to preserve power. Tibetan nuns, on the other hand, were wary of this change as they thought that it was diverging from the traditional paths and texts. In the end, the West prominence of Tibetan Buddhism allowed for this progressive movement to be pushed with the thought of gender equality in mind. However, this leads me to think, was this right for Tibetan, Western Tibetan feminist practitioners to change such a long-standing tradition despite backlash from even Tibetan nuns? While Tibetan nuns are most likely satisfactory with the end result today, it seems like Westerners are gaining unprecedented powers that even outrule Tibetans, which brings into the question if they could soon impede on other core practices that they feel need to change.